welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Today, we're going on a road trip. See how a chef from Donaldsonville has opened the first restaurant distillery in Louisiana. So I just wanted to kind of try to do things that I grew up with uh, growing up in a small town outside of New Orleans, uh, and, uh, and, but, but not focus too much on what everybody else is doing here. Experience Lula's with us. Plus, knuckles sucking good. The secret of success behind Baton Rouge's longest continually operating restaurant. I had the toast bread, cream <laughs> pots, go clean bathroom, do everything that you, get, you would do in a business. Then Dr. Nick on modern day motherhood as we celebrate all moms on this Mother's Day. Wouldn't it be fair to say that mothers sometimes don't like their children and maybe sometimes <laughs> like some children better in the moment at least? But first, Baton Rouge's oldest running restaurant started right here on Letworth Street, right off Thomas Delpit Drive. Its owner and the restaurant are still making history 82 years running. <laughs> Since 1935, the Chicken Shack's been frying up some of the best chicken in Baton Rouge. What's been the secret to the, that longevity and success? Chicken. <laughs> good knuckle-sucking good fried chicken. Joe Delpit's owned and operated it since he was 18, 60 years. But he's worked it even longer. Well, I've been working in the chicken business ever since I was five years old. I know it inside and out. I was born in the kitchen. His dad, Thomas Delpit, started the business. Where did this chicken recipe come from? From him. He's originally from New Orleans, and uh, he brought it to Baton Rouge when he came. I think he was close to 20. Customers say the brilliance is in the batter. A family secret recipe, only a few know. Even Joe's son, Tommy, who's cooked in the kitchen decades, doesn't know. Who makes the batter? My mother. <sighs> to this day? To this day. She's retired and she makes the batter. I guess one day, if her health fails, she'll have to teach someone else. She will. Uh, I don't know who it'll be. <laughs> You know, I kind of hope it's not me because I get asked too many times <laughs> to give the secret and I reply, if I give it to you, I have to kill you because they're going to kill me. <laughs> Chicken nearly flies out of here. They dish up dozens of other things on their menu, including daily lunch specials. I wanted to know the second most popular thing to order. The most popular is the pigtail. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am speechless. Yeah, pigtail. I've never had a pigtail. <laughs> you have? And guess what the special was the day I was there. You uh, want a pigtail today? You got pigtails today? Okay. I'll uh I'll be daring. Shoot ya. I haven't had pig's tails since I was a little girl in my hair. But I said, well, if they're the best, suck it to the chicken, I'm gonna try. There it goes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to kind of get past the um, the look of it. Although it does look, ooh, it looks really good. Oh boy, I bet it's tender. Okay. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh my God. The turkey neck at Thanksgiving is my favorite thing to eat. It's right up there with the turkey neck. Oh yeah, you may have to come get you some. Even if you've never eaten it like me, you're missing out. Which explains perfectly why Joe Delpit's being honored with the Pioneer Award at next weekend's first annual Downtown Baton Rouge Soul Food Festival. It made me feel great. Yeah, I was honored. He's a pioneer in more than the food industry. In 1968, he was the first black 
Baton Rouge City Councilman. It was a victory I didn't think I would have, but I did. There it was. That's the beginning of my political career. He then served 16 years in the state legislature and broke more barriers. And I was very proud to be the first black speaker pro tem in the legislature, so that was very exciting to me. Yes, yes. And it made me feel good. It should have. <laughs> and it's made black people feel good. How do you feel about how, what strides we've made racially in Baton Rouge? I think we've made good strides as it relates to bringing people together. I can remember way back uh, it, when I saw people kick off the bus and stuff like that, <clears throat> black people. Now, a black guy over the bus company, Capital Transit. I, I've seen this community come a long ways. Don't get me wrong, we still have a long ways to go because discrimination exists and job fair and jobs. Joe gave Troy Carter his first job at the Chicken Shack 38 years ago. Today, Troy's general manager and owns a percentage of the business. I think if a lot of people underestimate what he has done for the city of Baton Rouge. They don't know, they think he's just Joe the Chicken Man. They don't know all the great things he has done, all the fights he's done for the health of people, not just black people, all the people. That's the type of person he is. If you get to know him, you know a good man. Joe learned by example. His father was a trailblazer too. He worked with a lot of the ministers, uh, particularly in trying to uh, get the bus boycott going, and he would feed the uh, people who were organizers and just about every civil rights group that had a movement going in Baton Rouge, they would meet at the Chicken Shack, the original, on Letchworth Street. The adjoining street is named after him, Thomas Delpit Drive. And like the road itself, Joe says his dad taught him how to keep things moving. He was a, a organizer, he was a go-getter, he, he knew how to motivate you, even though it may have been harsh, <laughs> even with a belt. <laughs> but he would get you motivated. He, 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 everybody, he would have them motivated. He taught me everything I know about the food business. And he made him learn it from the ground up. Now, I worked all over. I had to toast bread, clean pots, <laughs> go clean bathroom, do everything that you, get, you would do in a business. And I learned every aspect of it. He's taught his children and grandchildren the same way. They're a big part of the family business throughout their three Baton Rouge locations, frying up more than 800,000 pounds of chicken every year. He taught me to always have a good work ethic, always be honest, and don't look for the easy way out. Soon they'll expand into the Big Easy with their fourth location and go head to head with another pioneer in the culinary and political world, Leah Chase. I was a little boy <laughs> and I used to go to New Orleans with my family. We used to go on Sundays primarily because Chicken Shack is always closed on Sundays. And we would go there and, uh, and, and eat and I met Dookie Chase and Miss Leah, and we stayed in touch. So every time I would go there, even after I was elected to office, I would go by and chat with her and eat with her at her place. Who has the, the best fried chicken? Was it there or here? Here. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate on that. No, I didn't have to hesitate. Joe's life, like his fried chicken, feeds the soul. <laughs> We're giving away 10 VIP tickets to next weekend's first ever Baton Rouge Soul Food Festival in downtown Baton Rouge. The first five people who email me each win two tickets. That email is Whitney at weekendswithwhitney.net. And still ahead, another unique restaurant, Lula's, the first restaurant distillery in Louisiana. Meet the chef from Donaldsonville and his wife from White Castle 
who made it all happen. Then, Dr. Nick and I salute mothers and motherhood. It's challenges in the modern age as Weekends with Whitney continues. Breck Summer Camp, where your child's next big adventure awaits. Where I explored nature. Where I splashed in the summer. Where I scored the winning point. Where I reached new heights. Where we beat the summer heat. Where I took a walk on the wild side. Where I used my imagination. Breck Summer Camp registration begins March 24. Give your child the adventure of a lifetime. So sign up today. Lula is the first restaurant distillery in Louisiana. Come on, let's go check it out. Inside this historic New Orleans building, they're making history. Welcome to Louisiana's first and only distillery within a restaurant. It's the creation of Chef Jess Bourgeois and his wife Erin. So I just wanted to kind of try to do things that I grew up with uh, growing up in a small town outside of New Orleans, uh, and, uh, and, but, but not focus too much on what everybody else is doing here. Jess is from Donaldsonville, where the Mississippi River and sugarcane fields define the landscape, culture, and culinary traditions. Lula's restaurant is named after the sugar mill, five miles from where Jess grew up. His roots run through everything in the restaurant. It's a great marriage uh, of, uh, of local product and, and us being able to showcase that. Not many people even know where uh, Bell Rose is or Donaldsonville is. Here in the distillery, they make vodka, gin, and rum, all from sugar and only from Lula Sugar Mill. It's funny the misperceptions that are out there about what, uh, what vodka is and and a lot of people just come in and say oh i thought it was made from potatoes yeah uh, but uh but yeah you can make vodka for anything anything that uh anything that has fermentable sugars uh, and our vodka is nice and clean uh, we uh we use some beautiful sugar from lula sugar mill four years ago one of our first shows on weekends with whitney featured lula sugar mill and two farmers who supplied it with cane kevin falcon and lance godet today we all came full circle. Did you ever think that you would see your sugar turn into a restaurant? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> a restaurant and distillery, the first ever in Louisiana. That's why this room is the best, because it's from our sugar. <laughs> to make it all happen, Aaron says step one was a bill in the Louisiana legislature. We had to have a bill passed in 2015, House Bill 233, um, to make it legal, to make a restaurant adjacent to an, a fully operational distillery legal. We are still the only um, fully operational restaurant distillery in the state in the Southeast U.S. I'm sure there are others to come and we are happy to be the ones that have paved the way to do it. Jess's first job was chef at Commander's Palace. Now with his own restaurant, he created every recipe on the menu. Ta-da! And out of the kitchen it comes. Some of their spirits that are distilled here are incorporated into their food, but not all. And Jess joins us to tell us about it. Yeah, so this is a, this is a very good representation of kind of what we're trying to do with our food here. You know, it's a... So this is a quail? Tell me about it. Exactly. So this is a boudin stuffed quail. We make, our, uh, we make a, a traditional rice boudin, uh, stuff it inside of a quail, we bake it off, and then oh we my. set it on top of some smothered cabbage and oh. onions and bacon. Uh, and then we oh. put a glaze of, of uh, cane vinegar, uh, cane vinegar, cane syrup, uh, and a little bit of our rum. And take a look at this. Uh, harkens back to where uh, I grew up. You know, it's a it's a pork roast. So we take a pork shoulder, mm. we cut it in a, in a really nice big chunks. We we cook it down until it almost falls apart. Uh, we sit it on top of some mashed potatoes oh. and cover it with a rich, rich stock sauce. Uh, and some and some uh, oyster mushrooms. Oh uh, my! Just a, a, a beautiful comfort dish uh, that we do here. And then we. Oh. Uh, sorry, yeah. every time you talk about it, I have to take a bite. Sorry. Yeah. Oh my and, God! Yeah. 
another delicious dish, his redfish. Some really fresh Gulf redfish. Uh, and then we top it with some chimichurri, sit it on top of some grilled vegetables. And then we take some uh, green onion popcorn rice, what that is. It's a variety of rice that we get out of uh, around Crowley uh, called popcorn rice. It's got a nice uh, scent when you cook it. Um, and we mix it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and uh, a lot of parsley and green onions, which gives it that nice green color. Uh, but all three, uh, this is a very, very good representation of, of what we're trying to do here. At the bar, their specialty cocktails are all made with their own vodka, gin, and rum. Several are even on tap. We have uh, a lot of really simple cocktails that uh, are just three or four ingredients, but, uh, but we really do them well. And, and the reason that we do them well, and we do them so consistently, is that we, uh, we have some on, uh, on tap, we have some in bottles. It really just, uh, it allows us, when making something in batch, it really allows you to to keep it uh, super consistent, uh, where if you come in in January and, and uh, you have Rachel as your bartender, or if you come in in, in June uh, and have me as your bartender, which will probably never happen, but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's gonna taste the same every time you come in. One of our best selling drinks right now, it's one of the most refreshing drinks, especially how hot it gets in New Orleans, right. is our uh, vodka basil smash, and I'd, I'd love to show you how to make it. Show me. Yeah. Three quarters ounce of lime, or just a little bit of simple syrup. Big handful of basil. Rocky basil smash. Wow! Cheers, everyone. It's smashing. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Tuesday, they toasted their first year in business. It was a great way to end Mardi Gras, which is really a marathon, not a sprint for us. Being located on St. Charles Avenue, we have over 30 parades that, that pass throughout the course of two weeks. Um, so that last day was time to kick back and have a cocktail and enjoy it finally because it was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it was fantastic. You look back at the numbers of what you are able to accomplish, how do you feel? How are they? I'm so excited. Really? Now I'm just so excited to be here. You know, it's it's a it's a city that uh, is full of restaurants. I believe the last uh, I heard they had 1,500 restaurants. Oh my! Uh, in the city of New Orleans, I guess metro area, but still, um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's very uh, it's very exciting uh, that we're being so well received and, oh. and that we're you know that it's it's just it's wonderful that we are where we are and that the future looks so bright. A future as bright as the chandeliers they designed adorned with 100 of their vodka bottles. They're defying the odds. 60% of restaurants close after their first year. We're on the course to, to be as successful as we've wanted to be. Um, it takes some time, um, we know that, but we are definitely making our way through it and um, it's working out pretty well for us so far. So we're very, very fortunate. Do you pinch yourself and go, oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. My dreams are being yeah. realized! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here at Lula's, you'll always find winning spirits. The next time you're in New Orleans, definitely check out Lula's. It is an experience you won't soon forget. And still ahead, Dr. Nick on modern day motherhood as Weekends with Whitney continues. Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. Happy Mother's Day. Dr. Nick is talking about motherhood with us this morning, modern motherhood, and we all question ourselves so much. I mean, there, how do you, you really know if you've done it right? Whitney, I, I want to put you on the spot. She's not ready for this. Uh oh We were talking earlier, mm -hmm. and you were saying that you were so proud of your daughter uh -huh. because she won uh, some kind of an English award. And student of the year. And student of the year, okay. This, Two years in a row. Right, this, this is my question, okay. if you could answer it. How do you keep her from 
the phone, the cell phone, the internet, the constant isolation. She's obviously doing some other things. She's, she's got to be socially interacting. Oh, she's yeah. got to be academically driven. But the question for you is, what, did you do anything? Or is it just in her make? I, I think it's in her makeup. Because the challenge of motherhood today is how to get kids off of the games and the, the internet, internet, the cell and phone, the Snapchat. And, and, the, and the, the, the Facebook. And, and you know, and, I, I've never policed uh, it with her. And you've and never policed it? No, no, we, we talked about what Have was you? appropriate and not. But I think she's had a cell phone since she was in sixth grade. Or? Have you encouraged her to spend time studying, to, to be a reader, to you know, be... What, she has a 98 average and she, I, I never have to ask her to do her homework. I never have to say, you know, I, I say, do you have tests? What's coming up? But I never have to say, you better get up there and be studying right now. It's her. It's her, I promise. Cause Interesting. I haven't had. But you do, but you would agree with me that, that to some degree, that's, that's a little rare. And I'm not here right. to toot her horn. I'm here to say that if you read anything in the research, it'll say the challenges of motherhood are how to get people, how to get kids to go outside and play, mm -hmm. how to get them to want to read books, how to get them to want to socialize more, how to get them away from the, the isolation and the interior world. Mm. Sure, uh, sure. How to, how to get them to not be so peer pressured. Damn. So that you can, you know, so that they're not how how to how to keep them from bullying or not or 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 or, or being not being bullied. I mean, these are the real challenges of motherhood today when there's so many things on a mother's plate, especially it, a single mother. Oh, I, I, God bless every single mother out there and father who you know who are having to, to do both roles because it, it is it's such a frightening world out there. You know, bullying, peer pressure. All of those things um, are terrifying. Would you would you make a distinction between okay. mothers and fathers? Would you would you mm -hmm. say someone someone uh, has been uh, someone recently said that women are more emotional and it's gone to viral and everybody's having a, a heyday over the fact that women should not be offended. called more emotional. I wasn't offended I don't by that. find that offensive. Mm -hmm. I think, and it may not be true across the board, but I do think that my mother and most mothers are the emotional hub. I think you're absolutely right. I think we, I ha do. I, uh, we have to be, don't you think? But, it, but don't, what, it, I don't know that mothers have, well, I guess what you're saying is that it's kind of in the makeup. Uh, yes. It's in the, it's, again, it's in the DNA, the nurturing, the gathering, the, the kind of keeping families together. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't it your mother that makes sure that y'all get together? <laughs> it is my, all the time. Isn't it my mother who will call you and say, is Whitney okay? <laughs> No, she calls me. She doesn't call me. <laughs> she calls Nikki. I guess she thinks, it, I mean, I'd I, give her a straight answer, yeah. but. All right. let, let, let's take another one of motherhood. Okay. Do you love, how do you love, you? how do you, how does a mother love kids equally when every child is different? Oh. Isn't that tough? He, 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 don't, How, don't, uh, doesn't, don't, wouldn't it be fair to say that mothers sometimes don't like their children and maybe sometimes <laughs> like some children better in the moment at least? Of course. Am I, am I, am I being too, well, I wonder, I'm I, not a mother, so. Can you love two things equally would be the question that I say. And I'm, I'm going to give you a very frank answer, no. Really? I love both, but I love different things especially. About each one. Yes. Um, and enjoy doing different things with them. So sometimes when people just, I love you all the same, I'm just, I don't buy it. I just don't. Well, I the think there are some varying differences in it. Well, one of the reasons why I don't necessarily buy it is because my mother was 24 when she had me, okay. and she was 36 when she had, I think, Angela. Don't you think she was different as a mother? Ooh. Yes, absolutely. I mean, don't we think, don't we have to give mothers the chance to change too? I mean, Reed was the first. I would think that that was different than, than, than your second one. Right, Sydney Joy, right. Not to mention the two different temperaments. Oh, completely. And the boy girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly, yeah, yeah. But how do we talk about that without making one child feel less loved? I, I mean, we don't want to come across like, you know, I, my mother would always- Did she have a My favorite? mother had a favorite. And she would say, and she would say, well, it's because he's, 
She always had a reason. Did the like, favorite change? <laughs> Did it ever change, or was she, there always one favorite? No, it, it was always <laughs> one. <laughs> it was always one, and the rest of us were always resentful. But, <laughs> but, not, but not to the point of wanting to harm him. Right, right. Just, well, you're the favorite. But sibling rivalry is also real. Oh, of it course is. it is. So, uh, uh, it is. I, I just think on, on this Mother's Day, it, I, I, I I just would love to, for mothers to know how valuable and special. I mean, mothers, you're not, I'm not around without a mother. No, no. And, and that, you carry us. That's right. And, and I think this is a day to, to really revel in motherhood. And, and, and just Enjoy. what if I could say one more thing about it. I, I deal with a lot of children, adult children, and I deal with a lot of mothers. And mothers have a lot of guilt for mm -hmm. not being what they think they should have been. And, I, and I'm, I think the part of my work is helping mothers let that go. Thank you. Let that go. We should all do it. Let that there are go. things I have not done perfectly in raising mine. You, you are, every once in a while you'll say to me, oh Lord, I'll never get mother of the year. <laughs> and and I think it's a great thing to admit, laugh about, and say, but you know, I, I, I'm doing okay. Yeah, yeah. There are I'm days I'm okay. great. I'm a great mom, and their days, not so much. <laughs> Very real. Just be gentle. Um, be gentle, especially with past mistakes. Okay. Really? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. We go into this Sunday celebrating mothers with that. Thanks, Dr. Nick. Yes. Bye. More weekends with Whitney after this. Atlas Foundation Repair. Fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks for joining us for Weekends with Whitney. We hope to see you back here again next week. Until then, we leave you with this.